that's done. Now I've only got two colors in my graphic, black and white. And the reason I want to separate this, even though I'm in draw, is because I want to start applying effects to my different colors in my design. It's almost like working in layers if you were in Photoshop. But here we're just going to be working on objects and pages, vector objects that are raster images and applying effects to those and then bringing those back to monochrome bitmaps, piling back on top of each other, and we'll have our design. So now that I've got this done, next step for me is I'm actually just going to separate with simple steps. I don't want to have to go in and change all this manually. I don't have the time to it. We'll save time in the tutorial. I'm going to come down here, and I'm just going to go ahead and set my reg marks, leave everything normal, not going to do any conversions or halftones or anything like that. And I'm just going to go generate separations and we'll process that. Now I'll have my black and my white separated so I can start working on them as different objects and you can see here I've got my black and next to this I've got my Pantone trans white. Now I can see there was some white in this design I missed and sometimes when you're dealing with separations it's great to get a preview on screen so if you miss something you can get rid of it. Go ahead and ungroup all of this because I know I'm not going to want this in my white. I guess I had a couple of objects stuck there and I didn't see that white against the white background. Very small outline but Here's my white separation, and this is going to become a monochrome bitmap or a raster object. And here is my black, and this is also going to become a monochrome bitmap or a raster object, and I'll start applying effects to that. So what I'll want to do is I want to convert this to a bitmap, but there's something I need to be aware of if I'm going to start applying effects and draw. First I'll go ahead and convert this to a bitmap. Bitmap, convert to bitmap, grayscale, 300 dpi don't need a transparent background. Anti-aliasing really isn't going to matter at this point. And I guess we'll go ahead and go with that. Now see I'm going at 300 dpi to size. If I was down at the regular size and converted then tried to bring it up I'd have problems because of pixelation. So if you're new you want to be aware of that. Whenever you start converting to these bitmaps for effects with your graphics you want to make sure you're to size. Or convert at a high enough resolution down here so that when you bring it up you're not going to lose detail. Go ahead and click OK and we'll process that. Now these files get pretty big because they are bitmaps now and you can see how I've got bitmap grayscale and layer 1 300 dpi. But we'll notice if I zoom in here and we'll go to view and enhanced excuse me, I'm going to go to view wireframe that the bounding box of my bitmap goes right to the edge of my wings and I don't want that because as I apply effects my pixels are going to spread out a little bit as I create these artistic effects and I don't want to cut my effects off on the edge where this bounding box cuts off my bitmap. So the next thing I want to do couple of different ways you can do this. I'm going to hit Control Z, but what we can do is we can simply create a rectangle around one of these objects. As you can see here, that just gives us a bit of room around the outside. Not a lot. We don't need a lot. We just need a little. Like you can see there. And I could also do this by inflating my bitmap in the bitmaps menu also if I wanted to. But I'm just giving myself a little bit of room there. Now, the next thing I want to do is take this, copy it, go back a page into my other color and paste it so I've got the same size bitmap that I'm working with on both graphics and I'll have that room around the edge of my wings there. So I'll go back to view and enhanced. I'm going to take the outline off of this. And I'll just come up here in my color palette and left click and that'll get rid of my outline. And I'll take this and I'll go to bitmaps and convert to bitmap 300 dpi grayscale select OK and process that. Now I've got my white set up as a bitmap. I'll be able to start working with that. And here I'm going to go to my black. I'll take the outline off of that rectangle. And then I'll go to bitmaps and convert to bitmap, grayscale, etc. Same as the other. Now, understanding that as we work with these artistic, distressed, grunge type designs, that we have a lot of freedom and leeway. They're very loose. They can be very loose, but yet, at the same time, because we're dealing with text, we're going to need to maintain legibility. So we need to watch what's going on with our design. But yet we can create these effects very easily. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to work with my black. So I'm going to go to bitmaps and I'm going to come down here into distort. And I'm going to go to, let me see, I want to go to, do I want to go, no actually I want to go to creative. And I want to go to scatter right here. And now you're going to see what happens when I click on this, we'll zoom out. And you want to be a, pay a careful attention to what's going on in places where you have tight detail. For instance, here in the banner. If I zoom out, actually I've got this dialog box up here. You can see that I've got this hand here. I can pan with that holding down my left mouse button. And I can also zoom in and zoom out with clicks also. And I can also scroll with my middle mouse wheel. But I can get an idea of what's going on in my areas of detail because I don't want to put so much effect in here that I lose my detail. I've got leeway because we're going for an artistic vintage type look, but I want to be careful about what's going on with areas of detail. 
Right now this is set to 3 and 3. You notice if I click on Preview, we'll zoom in here, and we'll zoom in real close, and I'll click on Preview. And Corel take just a second to process. You can see that I'm roughening up my edges. Now what I'm looking for here is almost like a pencil look. And you can see that's got kind of like, if you looked at a pencil line when you've drawn it by hand, it has that rough edge you'd get with the lead of the pencil. Now, depending on what I do with my marks here, if I change this horizontal vertical values in this dialog box and click preview, you can see I'm going to get quite a bit more effect when that's done. Now I've lost my detail and I don't want to do that. So I want to be back down here around three. I can just key these in, as you can see there, and click preview. Now that three, I think, is going to be pretty good. I actually want to take a look at four. And you can dial this in, and if, if you're not happy with it, you can always, you know, control Z or go back. But I'm actually going to go with the three for now in this particular session. And I'll hit preview again, and I'll take a look, and I'll say OK. So now I've roughened up the edges of my vector without losing a lot of detail. Very simple to do. All I wanted to do was just break up that vector edge. Now you can see that at this point in time we've really lost our smooth vector edge and it almost looks like a pencil like somebody drew it with pencil etc now I could use other filters and start to make this look like watercolor or paint very easily but the next texture I want to go to is very simple and drawn I just want to go to bitmaps and I want to go to artistic strokes and I'm gonna go to sketchpad very easy to work with here now if I go ahead and click reset and we take a look and go out here and take a look at what happens and I click on this preview and we're going with graphite this will take just a minute to process it has got a rather large 300 dpi raster image and I'll actually go ahead and zoom in here and as you can see it's still processing so that'll blank out for just a minute well it's processing and we can move here just a bit and I'll actually lock my preview and we'll see what happens with this style lead and outline settings in our sketchpad dialog box for this raster effect in draw. Now, Photoshop has these effects also. You can convert to sketch and stuff like that, but we'll take a look at this in draw. Here's my preview. Now, you can see that I've got what looks like pencil marks now going through here. And we'll zoom in just a bit. And there's a couple of things that I want to deal with. The first thing I want to deal with is I want to get rid of this outline. I don't want this black line that looks like somebody drew the pencil line in here and then colored it in. All you need to do is come down to outline, left click, hold down, bring that down to zero. That'll take just a minute to update, and then you'll see that that line will be removed once this is finished processing. Now, my computer tends to slow down just a bit when I'm processing these videos because the video is taking up a lot of system power. Now, you can see that that's gone. Now, I want to get my style, and you can see that if I left-click and drag the style back to 9 here and let that update, I'm not going to be so rough. I don't want to destroy everything here as you can see right there and then we'll make some other changes on this as we move forward but this will take just a minute to update and that's actually still processing and you've got a 12 by 12 300 dpi image so it's a rather large image and I'm not really happy with it. I want to bring my lead down I want this effect to be a little bit less than what's going on here and I might have to go take my graphic and resample it to 600 dpi to get less destruction from this particular filter and sometimes when you're dealing with the filters bringing up your resolution in the graphic if you've got too much destruction going on with the filters you're working with going from 300 dpi to 600 dpi will alleviate some of that and I can see actually probably at this point this is a little bit more than what I want and I've got this down I'm gonna hit cancel I'm gonna take this bitmap and I'm just gonna go bitmap resample and I'm gonna go to 600 dpi so I can bring the amount of that effect down on this particular bitmap image. Then I can go back to 300 dpi for memory's sake, but the effect won't be as destructive because I'm at a higher resolution. There's more pixels, etc. So you'll see how this works. Bitmap, and then I want to go to Art Stroke, and I'm going to go to Sketchpad. Our settings will be back to the same. I'm going to click on Preview, and we'll let that process. And now you can see the difference of the resolutions that 600 dpi, I'm much less destructive over here. So I'm going to go with this 600 dpi for this conversion. I'm going to select OK and Corel will process that sketched effect onto my design. Very easily, a lot of control. Outline all of the, these different settings here. If you just go and experiment with them, you'll have an idea of how they work. You'll be able to use them very effectively and very easily. And you notice 